It's been too long, gentlemen, so let's get this back on the road. Ugly Couch Show back again. Yeah! Happy to be back. It's great to be here. Stuff to talk about, people to talk to. That's right. You've been wanting it. Now you got it. You, you called the thunder. You asked for it. You want the best. You got the best. What he said. The best? Well, Pretty somewhere kind. in there. That's, right. Well, we're up there. Okay. We, we're gonna, we'll, we, we are up there. there. I've been watching everything in 3D. But I only see 2D right here. 2D? Two dicks. Uh, <laughs> great. <laughs> oh, well. Well, you're seeing 2D now because your glasses fell off. And I've got Booyah! <laughs> Suck my butt! <laughs> Showtime again. Hello, very old ladies. <laughs> I am Master Torgo. I'm the famous Paul. Commander K. And we're here to tell you what to watch, what to read, what to play. You remember. Well, not you, but you do. Yeah. So before we do Remember this that <laughs> indelible imprint we left <laughs> on the net sphere? That's what we do. That sphere's ours. All right, here, here comes These this. These spheres are ours. Here comes this. <laughs> but it is, what's going on in my mouth? Chili! Today's What's Going In My Mouth is brought to you by Chinese Fist Blast. If you don't know about it, consider yourself one of the lucky few. <laughs> All right, you ready? Go ahead, here it is. Oh, God, I forgot it's how been a minute. This feeling is now back. <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da -da! Ta -da! <laughs> uh, We're going to get close ups of this to yeah, put yeah, in. Wow. Right? First somebody Holy grabbed that, they tell me shit. What Ladies and gentlemen, Gravy candy? It tastes like gravy. <laughs> <laughs> Tasty, lumpy, sweet, delicious gravy candy. Um, Th mm. There's no list of ingredients on it. <laughs> wow. Just gravy. This is going to be straight up man gravy. All right, so it, it has the distinct look of a oh. Werther's Original type. Oh, my God. Uh, this, this is the kind of thing. This now, this, goodies. this, oh, my God, the smell. This would be some ooh, This would right. be some shit to put in a uh, Hold on. in a fucking old folks home. <laughs> here, right. it is here. What? It's mild. Uh, oh. Here, mild I'm gonna toss this to our studio audience. <laughs> they each get a gravy candy as well. The gravy candy cannon is going off. Let's ride that gravy candy train. <laughs> Look, it's got it's got an erect nipple. We're going off the rails. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, oh you can, it, it smells like turkey gravy. It does. It does. It smells like it's mild. <laughs> Through the plastic, always a good sign. Yeah. I already took mine out. All right, here you we go. Over there. Yeah. Oh, you can great. smell it. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta get it loose. Oh shit. <laughs> wait, get wait, loose wait. with the do gravy, we, do man. Do we have a place to spit these? That's what that That's plate what is for. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Slancha. <laughs> Tastes like gravy. Oh no, 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 no. No, I stand corrected. It's oh, oh it's my so, god! It tastes so like sweet. gravy and sugar. <laughs> it's so sweet. It tastes like somebody poured a bunch of sugar instead of salt in the gravy. First. Cool. <laughs> no. Ooh. No. <laughs> oh god. No. He, he bit into it. Oh. It oh, it broke on the floor. I ain't touching that. It's hollow. Okay. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> There's Someone kind of a the sticky fallen gravy. <laughs> There's kind of a day worn pantyhose aftertaste. I don't even want to know how you know that. It just is. <laughs> if that's what you, it tastes like, that's you what you it tastes like. You know what I mean? Like. like you can taste the polyfibers. <laughs> oh. This is not a natural substance. God it's mostly almighty. plastic. All these fucking things are mostly plastic now. <laughs> Gravy candy. <laughs> Who's Man. the fool? Yeah, who? Who's responsible well, for I'm this? Well, I'm the fool because I put it in my damn mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think there's no, there's no list of ingredients. Archie we're, McPhee. We're That's dying. Oh, that fucking guy. Oh, wow. We're dying. We're it's dying. Stick. It sticks. It's our yeah. last one. Is it's still oh. there. It's still there. You mm -hmm. fools have water. Man. There's like a center to it, too. Did anybody get to the center? Uh, no. Oh, really? Really? Was really? Three licks? <laughs> What's in the middle? I yeah. don't know. It looks Fact check, was there a taste that you lingered for you? I, I actually put it in my mouth for a much longer than I wanted to. Oh. Just to see if I can totally handle it and do it all. It's so bad. The center looks like gravy. 
Oh, oh I see. No. I thought that was hollow. It's actually okay. It's gelatinous. It's gelatinous. It's like gravy. gravy center. We broke one open. Fucking gross. Ugh. All right. Wow. Well, let's get some good pictures of that. Wait, yeah, so you know what to never get near. <laughs> God, that's terrible. That Ugh. is a fucking straight up prank. That is a prank <laughs> candy to put in your grandma's dish. Grandma's wow. <laughs> Seriously. Put that in granny's yeah. candy dish and fuck some shit up. Those would be awesome to sneak into a candy yeah, dish. Would. That's exactly it. Back oh, God, Grandpa they're terrible. Pulling me into having a cough drop. God, they're terrible. Bye on you. God, they're terrible. Wow. All right, gentlemen. Oh, that's the worst. What did you bring? Uh, uh, you want me to start? I want you to start. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus. you know him from Saturday Night Live, his epic chronicles of deep thoughts. He's back with a novel. It's Jack Handy. And the stench of Honolulu. <laughs> I got the audio version, read by the author himself, Jack Handy. Nice. This is gold. Fucking comedy gold. Holy shit, is this book hilarious. So it's basically Jack Handy going to Honolulu and having the worst time of his life describing the craziest shit that goes on in Honolulu. Like it's a, like it's a third world death hole. I can't even, I can't do justice to this book. By trying to describe it. You have to listen to it. If you like laughing, if you like comedy, if you like absurdist humor, this is your fucking book. Holy shit. I love all of his Deep Thoughts books. I have them it's all. It's so good. It's so funny. That's all. I'm not... I, Oh, all just, the, just the art in the in the cover. Just, it gets all the future gets points. Excited. It gets all the future points. Yes! It's really, really funny. Yes! Just really, really funny. Absurdist to the point of insanity. So funny. Oh. Stench of Honolulu. Run, don't walk. Or actually order it. Whatever. Wherever you got to find <laughs> it, get it. I think it was like 20 bucks. 20 bucks for an audio book. You, you, uh, how long is it? I mean, do you... you know, I don't know. Huh? <laughs> unabridged. No, it's unabridged, man. It's Even the better. whole thing. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's written with his style. Short to the point. You know, the, the, the chapters aren't that long. And it's only three CDs, but still, it's 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 value for your for your thing. Um, I'll just read the 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 back here. Okay. Are you a fan of audiobooks in which famous tourist destinations are repurposed as unbelievable hell holes for no particular reason? <laughs> Listen up. Jack Handy's exotic tales, full of laugh out loud twists and unforgettable characters, who na whose names escape me right now. A reliably unreliable narrator and his friend, who is some other guy, need to get out of town. They have a taste for adventure, so they pay a visit to a relic of bygone days, a travel agent, and discover an old treasure map. Oh, jeez. She might have been a witch, by the way. Our heroes soon embark on a quest for the Golden Monkey, which takes them into the mysterious and stinky foreign land of Honolulu. There they meet untold dangers, confront strange natives, kill and eat turtle people, kill some other things and people, eat another thing, and discover the ruins of ancient civilizations. As our narrator says... The ruins were impressive, but like so many civilizations, they forgot the rule that might have saved them. Don't let vines grow all over you. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking handy. gold. I can't tell you. Uh, there's so many little niblets in here of just. It gets into like it gets into like some little deep thought bits and just so funny. Stench of Honolulu, Jack Handy. Yes, well I'm, done, sir. I'm, I'm, well done. I want in. Well done. Kirsten, what you got? Well, what I got, let me tell you. Love. Yeah. Although, no, not really. Oh. But anyway, yeah, that's why I'm here. So, um, okay, X-Men fans, X-Men history. Spoiler alert, a couple years ago, you had a run uh, in the uh, X-Men in the Marvel Universe okay. uh, called, uh, I forget the exact name of it, but it involved the Phoenix Five. Okay. The Phoenix Force takes over five mutants. Cyclops, Emma Frost, Namor, a couple others to name. And slowly, the uh, power gets taken away from each of the mutants and given to the remaining. So, like, one drops out and then the four have the power. And the other gets knocked out and then the three have the power. And finally, like it ends up... It's kind of, sort of. Right. Yes, sir, indeed. Mm -hmm. Kind of ends up with Cyclops, Scott Summers, getting the Phoenix Force, being a dick. What a switch! Exactly. And, you know, and what happens with the Phoenix Forks when you got it? You're not nice. Exactly. He kills Charles Xavier. <clears throat> now, 
the reason I'm not uh, worried about spoilers is this part is actually backstory that's a couple years old. What happens is, it's a big schism in the X-Men. Everybody's upset at Scott. Everybody's upset about everything. Xavier's dead. There. What are they going to do? Xavier's dead. He's really upset about it. Beast decides he wants to try to fix things. And going back in time, he snatches the teenage X-Men, the 16-year-old X-Men, just weeks after they've started at Xavier's school, brings them to this time to show Scott what he does and like warn him, don't become like this. And that's where this story kind of picks up. Because you're having things happen with the new X-Men the, or the new young X-Men okay. in this timeline. It's they're a horrible life. They're complication, and it's the whole teen angst thing, especially Scott who sees what he does and what he becomes. There's Jean who gets really confused by shit because she finds out she died, she came back, she died. And uh, Beast, Beast was uh, looking like us, you know, except with yeah. like beastly hands and feet. He sees what happens to him. <clears throat> so, this story that I'm talking about, Cyclops. It's a series by Greg Rucka. Oh, we always love yes. Greg Rucka. Yeah, uh, Paul, uh, Paul will tell you about Greg because he met him. Mm -hmm. And um, what it is, is Scott, 16 year old Scott, who's an orphan, finds out his dad is alive. Remember, Major Corsair Summers of the Star Jammers is his dad? Who can forget that <laughs> X-Men in the 90s cartoon? <laughs> I that was a great part of the X-Men 90s cartoon. You remember that? That, that, that the Star Jammers no. is actually the Star Jammers it's it's, it's really funny. X-Men, we we've talked about this a few times like on the audio cast when a series is in limbo and nobody cares about it, they really go off the rails and get creative. So what happens is X-Men in the late 70s was a, was a red-headed stepchild. Nobody wanted it. Chris Claremont was on it, and artist Dave Cockrum, mm -hmm. before John Byrne, was there with Claremont. And they were, they were taking the mutants everywhere. It wasn't just about the mutant angst and otherness. They threw in, like, space aliens and battles and space pirates. Which is what became the 90s cartoon. Uh -huh. A lot of that... Exa oh, it, it, was, it, was, um, it was gold. It was creative gold because really they were unfettered, and they just went... Crazy. Savage the, Land. The Star Jammers was a space opera that Cockrum wanted Marvel to pick up and go with, and they kept dragging their heels. He finally turned it over to Claremont and said, let's put this in there. And that got put in, and then bang, they decided to make Corsair, the leader of the Star Jammers, Scott and uh, Alex Summers, Havoc's father, long lost. So 16-year-old Scott <clears throat> finds out his father, Corsair, is around which is in of itself, of course it's the X universe, it's complicated because Corsair was killed a couple years ago, but he's mysteriously he's alive. Back. So Scott is wrestling with weird shit. He goes crazy, he kills his great father figure, Charles Xavier in the future, oh. his future. He meets his real father figure. Gene's confused about him because actually Gene meets a, a adult Scott an adult Scott's a proper man and won't mess with her, but she's kind of like, oh, I'm liking the man Scott was going to become. <clears throat> she so, does like the mean Scott? She, well, because he's, it, it, dude, it's Marvel Some Universe. Lady, he's like, reforming. And uh, you know. After he killed Charles Xavier, he's yeah, reforming? he's reforming. And hey, he's a bad boy. And well, you know, Gene, Logan, you see what's going on. One day at a time. Well, did, did bringing young Scott into the future affect current? I would, no, and of course Marvel logic is probably along the lines of they haven't returned to the past yet. To make so, it happen. So everything is up in the Merg. air. So what right. happens is 16 year old Scott runs into Corsair and Corsair is like amazed he's got his son and his son's amazed his dad's alive and he's trying to figure shit out and he, his father says, come on, come with me, let's go into space, be a space pirate with your dad. And that's what this series oh, isn't is. That's what we all want. Exactly. Oh, come on. With come our on. Let's go be space isn't pirates. That? And come on. You got to admit. You got to give him that. I got to <laughs> give him that. There that's, you a, go. that's a great premise for a jumping off point. Hey, now, son, <laughs> let's go be space pirates. Bendis, who's behind all of this lunacy, of course, <laughs> recommended Rucka to Marvel for this series for this because run. Rucka has a son who's 14. Oh, look at that. And understands a lot of father son dynamic. Bendis wants to knows play what on. he's fucking doing. Exactly. As crazy as his shit is getting. Yeah. He knows what he's fucking doing. He's smart as hell. I've, I've, 
I'm liking the, I'm this is only issue two, but I'm okay. already liking the series. This one, huh? And Cyclops is my favorite X Men, so I well, am that liking. makes a difference. Oh, okay, so that's Corsair. Yep. In the back there. Yep. And, and there's that's Scott. Scott shooting. I beam it away. S on his shoulder there? No. I don't know what the hell. Probably armor. That's for Scott. <laughs> that's for Scott Summers. Scott Summers. Now you may ask me, how do I know all this background? How do you know Did all this you background? Did you watch the cartoon? Good question. No, sir. I listen to the podcast, Rachel and Miles Explain the X-Men. Oh. Explain is X hyphen plane, oh, I A I. These guys, Paul, you will believe, Rachel and Miles, big X-Men fanatics, they are doing a podcast where they're literally going through the whole, oh, the whole awesome. X-Men oeuvre. And they had Rugga on for an interview. Oh, wow. That's what got me uh, interested in this comic. Hmm, cool. So, Look for Cyclops, the comic, standalone series, running on its own. Very good. And check out Rachel and Miles Explain the X-Men. Because if you've had any questions coming out of Days of Future Past, they will explain them to you. like this. That sounds good. Well, Melissa, I want to read that. Yeah. Good to hear I'm Greg Rucka still liking making him. good shit. He is. He is. Rucka is cool. He used to come hang out at the bar at Corks. There you go talk with me and whoever was bartending. I've always been a Clive Barker fan. Really? Long time listeners of, of Geek Shock know this. Uh, for you old time <laughs> watchers of this program, you know this. Uh, Clive Barker put out a 3D comic, which is a very unusual thing to say, but I am a huge fan. This is the first time I have to say this though. I am not a huge fan of the story of what I'm about to show you but I am a fan of the product. It's called Clive Barker's Seduth. A one-shot by uh, IDW. He's been writing a lot of stuff for him. He uh, brought back the Hellraiser series, two comics. But what makes this so fantastic is the art. The story itself, it's very out there, very esoteric, uh, very abstract. It's not a very linear story when it comes down to it. But this is the most beautiful 3D art in a comic book I have ever seen. The, the, it just pops with the glasses to... I have never got into a 3D comic in my life. Okay, this but, one really transports but you. But this one, even though the, the, the story is not See gripping, the, the artwork and the way it juts out what they do with the color, because they do use the classic, as you can see, red and blue 3D. Did you ever not read so the uh, 3D adolescent radioactive black belt hamsters? I did. Because that was fucking <clears throat> tight. Oh, yeah. See? <laughs> oh, wow. But the internal art on this, and there are sort of full page art. Oh. Even you non 3D fans, this Coming will get, this turn is you great. around. Even without the 3D, it's good looking stuff. Well, it's it's great with the 3 Whoa! I just found myself transfixed page after page and went right back through it well, again. Well, you know what's interesting? Is that this, this outdated tech is what they're trying to incorporate for the new uh, Amazon phone. Really? Yes. That, this is kind of the new trick of the Amazon phone. It's going to have a sort of lenticular ability. These so come with the comic. When you turn it, <laughs> by the way, when you turn the phone, it does this kind of 3D effect where you can sort of see around stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So this is a head of behind its time. <laughs> <laughs> it is a one shot, uh, so available for a limited Whoa. time. Whoa! Uh, I believe it's uh, $5.99, $6.99 for the Manhattan? shop. Dr. Manhattan? If you want to show it off looks some like Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> some really beautiful 3D no, art. Oh, he's got some kind of fire penis. With That's the Clive him. Barker oh! aesthetic. Oh! <laughs> Is the fire penis this will what be threw you. you off the story? Fire pants always throws fire me off the story. Fire penis. Fire penis. You see the fire penis? I can't miss the fire penis. All right, folks, here we go. Put on oh. your 3D glasses. Put on your 3D <laughs> glasses, kids. Fire penis. There you go. That's all you need to say for this. Merry thing. Christmas. Thanks. You will be seduced by seduced. Oh. <laughs> seduced. IDW. Clive Barker. Seduced. So that's what we got. Yeah, what do you got? That, Write that, to that, us. That, comments that, at UglyCouchShow.com. Yeah, yeah, and uh, listen to our podcast, Geek Shock. We talk uh, wiki, geeky stuff. Oh, my God. And we've been doing it for, at this point, it's 243 episodes. Maybe 44 by the time you're watching this. You're putting it all in. 
Dude, it's beautiful. It is good. This it is, is good. this is amazing. It is it good. Is this is what's amazing. It, what's it's interesting about really. it? What's interesting about it is I think oh Curse and I we are legitimately impressed with this thing because we grew up with these fucking 3D glasses comics. Most of them were three colors. That's it. This is a fully rendered color comic, but the 3D still plays out and it oh. still shows up the colors really well. These too. guys yeah. have done. This is, pretty this, great. Is, this is good. This is good. I wonder if if it's just I mean of course it is the, the technology to do this to make these pages just right in the computer. You know, yeah, it's got probably a, has a yeah, lot to do with it. It's perfect. Everything's perfectly lined up now. Fact check. You got to look at this. Nothing's misprinted. Oh, that's what I said. Yeah, that page is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Wait till you get to that one. <laughs> oh yeah. And until yeah. next time, I'm Master Torgo. I'm the famous Paul. 3DK. And we'll see you next time when we do this whole couch thing right here. Till then. Till then. Till then, you Til furry then. bastard. Up your butt. You're so cute. You see that? They look good on camera. I'm not talking about the glasses. Oh, okay. Don't eat this shit. Yeah. I still have gravy Did you breath. crunch it? Fuck no, you. I'm, just having some, I'm having some ice. Oh, wow. Oh. This actually oh. looks kind of cool. It's worse when you crunch it. Ah! <laughs> Don't oh. crunch. Uh, it's a gravy Don't cheddar. Don't crunch, kids. Mm. Oh, God! I can <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh! What the <laughs> fuck did you do? You unleashed hell! Oh. Woo! <laughs>